Beloved, I still want to welcome each and every one of us, and um, that is welcoming you into a very gracious month. A month that God has promised that is a month revelational knowledge will be impacted on each and every one of us to know the hidden riches in Christ Jesus. When there's a pandemonium and people are struggling and they are fearful, we are encouraged because the word of God has been revealed to us that these diseases we hear of are not our portion. Amen? How do we know it is through God's word? Praise the name of the Lord. And that is the whole essence of God's word. So today we are continuing in this discovery. What does discovery do to someone? When you discover something, it ceases to be um, a mystery to you. True or false? When you discover something, it empowers you. You have an edge over people who are still groping in ignorance. Praise the name of the Lord. Women, please come back and sit down until the message is over. This is important time. No disruptions. Thank you. So, the hidden treasure of God is so that God's people can be empowered. If you're not empowered, you are like a child in your father's house where the servant has a greater right because you're a child. You don't know your rights. So the God that we serve is a God who knows. After all, these things have been made known to us through revelation and through God's word that this will mark part of Christ's word return. Praise the name of the Lord. So when they are panicking, we are encouraged because we know the truth. And it helps us to pray more that Jesus return. The Bible said that these days will be shortened for your sake and for my sake. Amen? Amen. So, um, we are also continuing in this because we have been promised that there's going to be a, a revelation for us to discover. What next? What should that discovery do for you as you're seated? Number one question I'm posing for us is, what is the true church as intended by God? You need to know what God's true church is. And if you know, then it will help you to know if you're not in God's true church, you need to find it. Amen? And that will help us to know what the true church is. I, I need two volunteers. One person, Ephesians 1. Quickly, please, Ephesians 1, 22 to 23, from this side. And on my left, I need somebody with a message translation to just read for me 1 Corinthians 12, 12 to 13. Message translation and NIV on this side. NIV on my right. Ephesians 1, 22 to 23. And message translation here. 1 Corinthians 12, 12 to 13. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him, who fills everything in every way. Yes. And God. Somebody say God. It is God that appoints. It's God that tells you who and what is his church. Yes, 1 Corinthians 12. 1 Corinthians 12. Yes, 12 please. to 13. Yes, please. You can easily you can easily enough see how this kind of thing works by looking no further than your own body. Your body has many parts, limbs, organs, cells, but no matter how many parts you you can name you are still one body it's exactly the same with Christ it is exactly with Christ his body the church is 
the same thing. The way you look at your body component parts. It's the same thing. It's telling us that's what God has set out to be the church. So why does church exist? Why? That will form part of our message today. And then you will ask yourself, do I belong to the church or am I a member of a group? You know, I want to shock each and every one of us seated. Some of us are not part of God's church. Some are part of a named group, supposedly called church. The church of God is the body of Christ. Am I a part of it? It's a question that should be going on in our minds. If I do, if I do say I am a part of it, what is my role? What is my purpose? We are told that the same way our entire body is formed, that's how God has proposed that the church should be. So it takes me to our reading of First Corinthians 12, 18 to 27. And please use message translation quickly. I want you to think about how this makes you more significant. Yes. Please listen, church. Not less. A body isn't just a single part. Mm -hmm. It is all different. Did you hear that? That there are times that you begin to say, do I really have a place? Do I belong? Am I part of this? Because you are part of the body of Christ. That's how you have received the impartation. If you are a part of his body, by not what you have done, the choir sang this morning that is because of what happened on the cross. And so you have been enabled to be part of this body. It's a privilege. Please say to your neighbor, it's a privilege. It's a privilege. And if something is a privilege, what does it tell you? You don't deserve it. You don't merit it. You may deserve it though, but you don't merit it. You didn't merit it. God gave you a merited favor that placed you there. And so, I can tell you with all the excitement that I am, I do the work I do with great joy. Because I look at the congregation, I'm not looking at the entire universe, I'm looking at these beautiful faces, and I know that there are better preachers seated here and listening to me. Those who understand God's word that can dissect it. That I am privileged. Hallelujah. Amen. I am privileged to be the teacher or the preacher. An enormous eye or a gigantic hand wouldn't be the body for a monster. Hmm. What we would have is one body with many parts. Each is proper size and its proper place. No part is important on its own. Can you imagine eye telling hand, get lost, I don't need you, <laughs> or head telling quick. You are fired. Your job has been phased out. As a matter of fact, in practice, it works the other way. The lower part, the more basic and therefore necessary. You can live without an eye, for instance, but not without a stomach. When it's part of your own body you are connected with, it makes no difference whether the part is visible or clear. It makes no difference. Whether you are that person cleaning the church, 
or arranging the seats and the person preaching the word. If the seats are not arranged, if the instruments are not put in place, the church will not be complete. It doesn't matter what you're doing. Don't take pride or don't feel insignificant. Because the head of the church knows and sees the body. It's those comely parts that don't seem to be obvious that are the ones you can't do without. That's God's word. And so I want each and every one of us to flow along with me. What does that leave you knowing? And what is it saying in the scripture? I have taken time to pick them one after the other. Number one thing I saw is it is God that has set the members to where we all belong. As he pleases God. It is God that has done what church? <laughs> Let's do it together. It is God that has placed each and every one of us where we belong. As it pleased him. So that he's supposed to bring pleasure to what? To God. Where you are and what you do is supposed to bring pleasure to God. Another thing I saw is that he deliberately made it to have component parts to fulfill different purposes. If God had made each and every one of us just head and there are no hands and the feet, will it be a complete body? There's one we used to see in my country. Somebody buried himself. You know these con men they are everywhere. And there are so much in my nation. This man was buried. He had all his parts, yeah? They put him inside um, a container. Covered the entire part. Just brought out his head. And they kept making money out of people and say headless man. Or, or, or bodiless man. And people were trooping there and putting money to go and watch. In Lagos. Because to them, it's an abnormal thing. And this man was doing everything, yet he had nobody. It was a lie until police zoomed in on him and all his gang. But they will tell you that God knows that if we become just bodiless people, we will not be complete. And so the scripture we read this morning says, he placed each and every part different component parts for different purposes different uses amen somebody yes. another thing i saw is that to him though we are many but we are seen as church as one in unit even though i joys i have hands i have feet i have mouth i have head i have neck i have but, um, stomach, everything, but I'm still Joyce. He hasn't made me three, four, five people. I'm still one. It's the same thing. God is using a wonderful analogy that you and I can understand because you look at yourself and He tells you the whole story. Praise the name of the Lord, somebody. Another thing I saw is that no one should despise the role of each. Don't. We have different gifting and different abilities. And it is God that gives. And those abilities he gives is as per what he knows he has built into you. He knows your capacity. 
And you know what? When God looks down and sees you occupying your place, you bring pleasure to him. But when you want to go and take another person's place, you know what you do? You struggle. And you're bringing displeasure to God. Another thing I saw is that the ones we, in our heads, assume to be more honorable are the ones that matter less. The ones we think in our heads. For instance, as I'm standing here preaching, somebody may think that, oh, is the pastor that is uh, the whole thing. No. It is you that go out to bring souls. They go and tell people. There's Jesus. Remember, when Andrew was found, what did he do? George, answer me. What did he do? He brought his brother, Peter. If he didn't bring his brother, maybe there won't be a rock. So you standing and teaching and preaching, if the evangelist doesn't go out there to bring people to salvation, you will find nobody to preach to. That's how you must not make irrelevant the most relevant parts of the body. Another thing I saw is that there should be no division in his body. That we should have care for one another. And you know what? We are in a, a under the influence of the Holy Spirit. This morning at the upper room, the word we were admonished with was encourage one another, build up one another. And I began to smile in my spirit. I say, Lord, you're making my work very easy. He already started it at the upper room. That the Lord spoke to her heart to share that we should bring our strengths to encourage one another. And that's the message that I saw in what my son read this morning. And that's what God is telling us. That because we are knitted together, what does he do? When one part is suffering, other parts are suffering too. Vice versa. When one part is rejoicing, other parts should do what? The rejoicing also. I can tell from experience that there was a time I had ear pain on my left. Very significant thing here. But it took me off balance. I stood up and I staggered. And I called my GP. He said, is your ear? Come. And he saw, looked into my ear. Ordinary ear. Isn't this very insignificant? No. But that is what I thought. That I could use my hand and cover it and tell it, yeah, keep quiet. You don't matter. But it took my balance off that I could stagger, the whole body staggered. That's what God is telling us. Each and every one of us, no matter where you are placed and what you are placed to do, even if it is to flush that toilet, it is so important before God. You are moving people from one place or the other. Try not to come on a Sunday. You see what will happen. Nobody will find transport. And they will have so maybe that day will be the day Jesus will come. And he wants to pick us from the church. Because he he is coming on a Sunday. 
<laughs> and as soon as he gets there, he sees only two, three people. We will just quickly follow him and go. So you need to be where you need to be at the right time for the right thing. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Now, when we have heard what the body is, you now ask yourself, am I coming to church because I'm a part of the church? Or am I coming to a fellowship to socialize with my people? Am I coming because I have a, I'm, I'm a part of this? I have, I have my place in this. God has placed me there. I'm not an accident. None of us is an accident. None of God's children. That's why some psalmist told us in Psalm 139 that we are fearfully and by who? By God. So, having found out our place in the body, what is my purpose? What is your purpose? What is your purpose? What's my purpose? Revelation 4.11 You are worthy our Lord and God to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things and by your will they were created and have their being. So what does he tell us? That our purpose first and foremost is to bring pleasure to who? God. To God. So now your question is, is my life pleasurable to God? Please ask yourself, Joyce, is your life pleasurable to God? Please ask yourself, except if you're Joyce, then you can say so. Is my life adding value to God? Can God look at me and say, Thank God for my son, thank God for my daughter. The scripture of Ephesians 1 4 says, For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight, in love. And that takes us to the character of God. For you and for me to be blameless, godly character. Thank God for our Sunday school this morning. Say some of us have delayed marriages because of wrong characters or character flaws that we need to work on. If I wasn't married, I would have gone to work seriously on one particular thing. But thank God I'm already married. Amen. So you need to discover your own and go home and work on it. If you don't work on it, what happens is that though you can be beautiful outwardly, but inwardly you'll be your life will be reposeful. And people will know it because they said to us, when you lose money, you have lost something, yeah? But when you lose character, you have lost everything. So, God wants each and every one of us. The reason why he made us in his image and his likeness is so that his character will rub off on us and we will be like him. Amen? God loves unconditionally. And God wants you and I to love people on. And do you know how he does it? He will bring very impossible people. Difficult, challenging people your way. That is a test you must pass. If you claim to love God. He won't bring lovable people your way. Because if he does, you already pass. 
but he will bring difficult challenging people by your side you wake up you see them you go to bed you see them you do this you see them why is building up a character in you resilience which is, is drawn out of patience when you are patient with people some of us struggle with this thing patience but God is will you have an average will you have a pass mark the one they call let my people go how many of us we are dull in in our school days some of us were struggling let my people go <laughs> thank God for England where, where there's no exams so you don't go to school don't go to school at the end of it all you enter the next class but back home, back home you you needed to take exams and sometimes is because when you get home to my home and you didn't get to a particular one to this you will get <sighs> let's hold it there so is the same way god is calling us he's calling you and i if after hearing this word you were scoring 30 percent god expects you because the word of god builds up and brings transformation amen, amen. god expects you to go home and put the word and put your life alongside god's word including me teaching and preaching we get home we look on what god is expecting our purpose because God has created a people that we have his image and his likeness to be his extension here on earth. Amen, somebody. And that takes us to the next purpose of God. God wants us to bring worship to him. A people that can worship. You see, when we do worship, I get to the third heavens. And when we are stopping the worship, it's as if to say, why? But because there's time for everything, we have to stop it. Otherwise, it is a practice of what we'll do when Jesus returns. Amen? Amen. And the earlier we start to practice it, the better. Sometimes when you want to enjoy God and when things are coming so tight on you, forget about prayers. Just go on your knees and embrace God in worship. You will feel amazing presence of God. You will feel a lifting of that burden. You will feel a sensing of the Holy Spirit saying it's going to be well calm down I'm taking you through treasures because this experience of pain rejection failure is not that I've, I'm not with you I'm equipping you with a resource that can make you pleasurable more unto me if only you can know it praise the name of the Lord and so what is our worship to God I want to shock us and I will end it here when God permits me because of my time when God permits me next time we will continue on our purpose because we have so much that each and every one of us must hold to your heart and you begin to ask and find your out whether you're part of the church how do we worship God is it just by singing the way you address people is a worship of God the way you address your partner your husband your wife is a worship ask me how 
How can that be a worship? Because you know you cannot love God that you haven't seen. When you don't love your spouse placed beside you. And you can't love somebody without using the right tone to speak to them. You love somebody, you speak to them in a manner that builds up and not tear down. You love people, you value them. You give them acceptance because each and every man is seeking acceptance whether you like it or not. It is built in us, into us, by nature, by God himself. God, that's why the Bible says our God is who? A jealous God. When you give God's time and God's things, to other things. God gets jealous. The same way. Some of us cannot even show love. Show care. Attention to our partner. We show it to others. Oh yeah we show it to others. Because we want to look good. You know. We want to spread our. Generosity. Where we don't. You know. But God wants us to value one another. Value your partner could be just listening to them when they want to talk nothing and sweet rubbish. Oh yes, sometimes we talk sweet rubbish. If you don't, I do. And I'll be looking for attention. You know, sometimes you engage your spouse with you know, chasing the, the shadow, all those good chase, dreams, why dreams? Somebody must listen to you. That's a worship to God. Someone he has made in his image and placed beside you. God wants you. Another way is the way we handle assignments given to us. How do you as handle assignment? Not only the words given to you in church. At work. Can people beat their chest and say, don't worry, no supervision needed. You can do it with or without the supervisor. Can that be said of you? It's a worship to God because they will find out that it is because of who you are. The way we present the truth to people. I used to lack too much in this area. I just tell you the raw truth. And it hurts. But we should handle it carefully. Tell people the truth. But do what? Handle it carefully. Look at how they are. Where they are. And then deliver the truth. Because that's when it can become impactful. The way we handle issues of confidence. I wish all of us were pastors or all of us were counselors. Because you breach confidentiality in this country, you go to jail. It doesn't matter whether you were doing um, a favor. <laughs> like in this place, we do counseling. We don't charge, do we? Bessie, do we charge? We don't charge, it's free. We have an office in Hosham because we have lost our church office. I've now transferred my service to the Hosham churches to join Bessie then. We don't get dime as payment, but don't breach confidentiality there. You go to jail. So church is the same thing. Rise on your feet. I don't know where God has spoken to you. But I know that God is a faithful God. And it's not by accident you're here. All eyes closed. God is in the business of moving us. Where we are challenged. 
the things that are challenging us, God wants to help us. I don't know someone that is hearing us and is struggling with an area of purpose of God over your life. But God wants to help you. If that represents you, please lift your right hand unto God and we just agree that the grace will be made available unto you. You are Chalepa Koshara Masenteribodadi. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for those Ama Kaye Rebosu Lipasendere Makahe Teria Baseto Lenda Rama Kasura Bashandaria Matori Bata in the Le Pasula Hike Mosuta. Lord, we are grateful, O God, for your word. No one can speak your word except by your spirit. We thank you, O oh God, for your the hands of your children. Lord, you know the area that we don't know. But they're asking, O oh God, in humility, lifting their hands unto you, saying, Lord, touch me in this area. And Lord, I pray that there will be a touch, and your name alone shall be glorified. May the Lord bless each and every heart with understanding of his word, and that at the end of it all, the word will nurture us into producing the nature of God. And the word will not stand as a snare against us. Lord, so let it be. In the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And the church says, Amen.